grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are what you eat. That's a fair summary of what the Pharisees taught about where sin comes from. God set up laws regarding what was clean and what was unclean for his people Israel in order to point to Christ. The sacrifice of animals in the burnt offerings pointed to the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. The people ate these animals as a witness to the world that God's people live from the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. The problem was, the Pharisees thought that crossing these dietary boundaries was the source of sin. That he's eating the wrong type of food or drink or even eating it in the wrong way is what makes you a sinner in God's eyes. They thought that sin really comes from the outside, from corruption by the world around us, even in something as trite as what we eat. They've completely missed the point, according to Jesus. Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. By nature, we actually agree with the Pharisees and not Jesus. We think sin is something that corrupts us from the outside, not something that we have in our own hearts. When you've been caught in sin, what is your response? Do you own up to it? Or is your inclination to blame everyone and everything around you for your actions? Well, if you're anything like me, your inclination is to do the latter. When I commit sin, when I do something wrong, my first response is to look around for excuses, to shift the blame from myself to someone else, something else. I was tired. I was desperate. It seemed like the only option I had at the time. What else was I supposed to do after she did that to me? That's the default response of a sinner to his sin. Rather than admit the sin that came from within us, from within ourselves and from our evil desires, we blame those around us. We think that our sin comes from being corrupted from the outside world. This shouldn't surprise us. After all, we're only following the family pattern set by Adam and Eve. The serpent deceived me. The woman whom you gave to me, God, gave me the fruit, and I ate. We blame the things that tempted us. We blame our neighbors. We even blame God for the sin that comes from within our own hearts. This past Wednesday, Vester Flanagan, also known as Bryce Williams, shot and killed two news journalists live on television in Virginia. He had been fired from the news station some time ago and harbored some resentment against the station and against his coworkers. And in a fax he sent to ABC to explain why he did what he did, he listed things like comments that he had perceived as racist from his coworkers, as well as the shootings in Charleston earlier this year. Like all of us sinners, he blamed his evil on the world around him, not on the sin within his own heart. Well, if sin comes from within our very own hearts, how are we to love God and his design for our lives from our hearts. As our Old Testament reading tells us we must, when the inclination of our hearts is always towards sin. How are we to love our neighbors as ourselves when, as Jesus says, out of our hearts come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Making more rules for ourselves certainly won't help. All the ritual purity laws that the Pharisees observed didn't help them to love God and love their neighbors. All the gun control laws in the world wouldn't have changed the heart of Vester Flanagan. Perhaps they would have stopped him from committing murder, but they would not have done anything about the sin in his heart. Since sin is within our own hearts, the only answer is that God must come and change our hearts. 
God must produce in us hearts which love him and our neighbors. The solution to sin can't come from sinners. The solution must come from the one who was without sin. That disqualifies everyone except for Jesus. Jesus cleanses our hearts from sin. The author of Hebrews says, The blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purifies our consciences from dead works to serve the living God. As the only person to live without blemish, that is, without a heart corrupted by sin, Jesus gave himself as a true sacrifice for our sin. By shedding his very own blood on the cross, Hebrews tells us that it's that blood, the blood of the sinless Lamb of God, which purifies our hearts. In baptism, the forgiveness won by Jesus on the cross is given to us. It's applied to our sinful hearts so that we are washed, we are made new, cleansed from all the evil deeds that Jesus tells us comes from our sinful hearts. Cleansed from murder, adultery, coveting, evil thoughts, pride. And the result of this forgiveness, the result of having our hearts cleansed by the waters of baptism is that we may now, for the very first time, love God from our hearts, love our neighbors as ourselves to serve the living God. Nothing inside of us can change our sinful hearts, but baptism, which cleanses us from the guilt of original sin, sets us free to love God and to love our neighbor. Paul tells us that while our sinful hearts might still produce evil deeds, like Jesus speaks about in our text, there is another person at work producing fruits of righteousness. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The Holy Spirit works through you who are in Christ Jesus, you who have been given a pure heart through your baptism, to produce fruits of love. The love of Christ, the love which led him to the cross to die for you, is now at work in your heart, bringing forth not evil deeds, but love for God and love for your neighbor. We now live in the life of love that the Holy Spirit produces in us through our baptism. We live in the life of love for which Christ died. And although we still bear sin in our hearts, we confess our sins to God our Father in repentant faith. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.